So the entire goal of row reduction is to arrive at this row reduced echelon form. I'm going to be lazy when I write and just write this as row reduced echelon form, RREF. What is row reduced echelon form? The first non-zero entry in each row is one. So that means the leftmost entry that's not zero needs to be one in every row. The leading one is to the right of any uh, leading ones above it which means it's going to go sort of like a staircase of ones. Rows of all zeros are at the bottom, so if you have any of those useless zero rows, you can use swaps to get them to the bottom. And all of our leading ones, uh, this last one is um, to do a complete reduction instead of back substitution. I'm going to go with complete reduction here. Uh, if, you, if you don't do this last one, I believe you're just in echelon form. Uh, but we're going to go all the way and get ones as the only entry. Um, whenever there's leading one, it's the only non-zero entry in that column. And it turns out these leading ones tell you which variables are not free. So I like to think of these ones as locking down variables, meaning that make, it makes them not free. So this step four really tells you uh, what variables are not free. So here are some row reduced echelon form matrices. So here's the matrix. This is the uh, perfect row reduced echelon form. Every row, the one is the first non-zero entry in it. The uh, column that the one is in is all zeros. And there's no way to get a one. We already have a one here. And this last one, you're usually not going to have, you're going to have just random numbers in that last column. So what is the solution? What I'm going to do is flip this back into a linear system. So if I went X, Y, Z, actually I use X, Y, Z a lot. Let's go X1, X2, X3. I don't have to use X1, X2, X3, but I'm just going to because some problems are going to use X1, 2, and 3. Some of them are going to go X, Y, Z. So just get used to either one. X1 equals 1, that's row 1. 1 X2 equals 2. And 1 X3 equals 3. So our solution is the point 1, 2, 3. So this has a single solution, no free variables. How do I know there are no free variables? Think of these ones. This first one locked down X1. The second one locked down x2, the third one locked down x3. So there's only three variables, they're all locked down, there's none of them that are free. Now we're going to consider this matrix. Is it in row reduced echelon form? This one is a leading one, that's okay. And uh, they're only non zero entry in the column. So this column right here has a one, and then everything else is zero. There is no uh, one here, so that seven, it's actually not satisfying number four. So what can I do? I can do a row operation here, and I'm multiplying by one seventh. Now, so it looks like we have a free variable, because I didn't lock down if this one x1, x2. It looks like x2 is free. However, when I write down the equation right here for the second row, I get 0 equals 1. And remember back uh, two slides ago, that is inconsistent. So we would get no solution. So also known as inconsistent. So this would be an inconsistent system. You could tell right here. If I wrote down the equation, I would get 0 equals 7. Obviously, not true. So 0 also does not equal 1. You can see inconsistency uh, pretty early on in your row reduction. So if you see inconsistency, you do not have to go any further. I could have written down 0 not equal to 7, skipped all this, and written no solution, inconsistent. So this would be inconsistent, although it is still in uh, row-reduced echelon form.